even in the midst of the trials and tests, we're not sure what God's doing. That's why James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Amen. Right in the midst of all of that, count it all joy that you might, uh, as you fall into different temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But in the midst of that whole admonition, he said, and you know what? If you lack wisdom in this, and he's basically saying you do, then stop thinking you have it figured out what God's doing and step back and begin to ask for wisdom. Lord, what is it you're, what's that point you're really trying to get to in my life? Romans says it this way, offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice. Offer it all up and say, Lord, whatever area you want to put your finger on right now, that's the wisdom of God, that's the power of God, and I submit to it. I submit to your sovereign wisdom and your will. There's many things that, some, that we want to offer up that God's not wanting you to offer up right now. But you can't go wrong ever offering it all up. Amen. Amen? And so as we, as we look at the wisdom of God and, and that, Romans, that Romans passage that he speaks again to us and you can turn over there to Romans 12 if you want. There's one other, one other aspect that I wanna, want us to look at. As he speaks about the renewing of our minds, where he's in the midst of revealing our heart to us, because that's what most trials are. The Lord chastens those that he loves. Amen? Amen? And so when he's teaching us and chastening us, when you go into these different temptations, tests, and trials, as James speaks, it's for the purpose of revealing our hearts. Regardless of what way, which way it expresses itself, the issue of our hearts is always self-will. It just manifests itself in different areas. But every trial that you face is to kill you. Amen. To get your heart offered up as a living sacrifice to Father. Every trial is to reveal your independence, your pride, your self-confidence. To tear down all of your preconceived Ideas of how God should and will work. Every trial deals with your ambition, your self-indulgences. Or let's just say it another way. Self, 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 self. Amen? Amen? Does anybody in here think you're maybe a little preoccupied with yourself? Oh, there's not enough hands. You want me to get you? <laughs> We can go down the list. So, you know, I mean, if you didn't. And so we understand what the Holy Spirit's saying to us. But look as, as he speaks toward this. He said, I want you to have this renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove. What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Now it's he that worketh in us to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen? Amen. Here's the perfect will of God for you. I'm going to tell you tonight what the perfect will of God for you is. Take up the cross of Jesus and die. Amen? Amen? 